Yeah, hello and welcome to this overview tutorial to our new tool, Beat Assistant. And this tool helps you a lot really when you try to animate stuff in After Effects according to the music. And it works quite different to compared to other tools that exist for such a purpose for audio animation, because what it can do is it detects the beats per minute of your music and then makes stuff at beats, like generating markers at beats, or moving your layers according to the beats or generating keyframes to the beats. And to see how this works, so this is the user interface of Beat Assistant and the heart of it is really here this beats per minute. If you know how many beats per minute your music has, you can simply enter it here. Otherwise, just select your MP3, RAVE or IF file and click on auto detect and it calculates for a few seconds and then it says okay in this case I found 130.7 beats per minute. And that's already it. Now we can start doing stuff with these. So this is the first thing I would always do is generate markers. Yeah, This is a process I basically in any audio animation I did before I did this manually like playing back the music and hitting always on your keyboard when there is a beat such that you have a nice annotation of uh, your beats. But here it's much easier you can just say use every beat to generate markers, click and bam you have markers set at a regular interval such that you have in total 130.7 markers or beats per minute in this case. Uh, the generation of these markers depends on the current position of your cursor. Yes, this is the only important thing you need to know whenever you use Beat Assistant. Make sure your cursor, your current time indicator is placed at a beat. Yeah? So for example, let's say we want to generate markers on this layer and I place my uh, current time indicator here and click on generate markers you can see they are offset it yeah this seems to be a bit unintuitive at, the, at first but it's actually quite powerful and more flexible because this allows you to do arbitrary modifications not only exactly at beats but also relatively shifted to it yeah imagine that you want to animate something in, not exactly at the beat, but always a little bit later or something like this. You can easily make this because all functions of Beat Assistant always respect your current time. So I go on undo and show you a little bit of the options you have for generating markers. So one thing you can de do is of course to do not only generate on every beat, but let's say we only want to have a marker on every bar which would be in this case every fourth beat. We can just say every fourth and go on generate markers. And now you can see we have on this layer only on every fourth a marker. Also we can number our markers. Let me again undo this. Uh, so I can go here and say on every fourth beat I want to have a continuously numbered marker. And now you can see we have these markers. You can also like number your beats in a fashion like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, to really have uh, the, 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 the beats annotated uh, with the correct numbers. Another thing that I also like is once you have generated markers for every beat, you can simply overwrite, uh, say, every fourth beat with a continuously numbered version. So if I have it like this, and I think I don't need these anymore, so I click on right click, delete all markers. Now I have something where I have a marker on every beat and on every bar I have a number. Yeah, This is very nice for collaborations because then you can tell your colleague oh, well at bar number four second beat we have to do some uh, manipulation something has to be improved whatever. Yeah, So it's a very convenient way to generate your markers and it's 100% accurate. Yeah, Much more accurate than if you would try to do this manually. Okay but Markers are really just the beginning. The next very powerful thing is that we can move layers. Yeah, in this case I have here a few text layers and let me just select all of them from the first to the last and just click on stagger layers on every beat. Now what now happens is that they are staggered in time and if you compare it to the markers here it's one beat per layer that it is staggered. This looks as follows. Uh, very nice. Again, um, you can not only 
move your layers, but you can also just move the in points in case you only want to make them appear but not disappear anymore. You can also just move the out points or you can move the in and out points, which is compared to this here differently because like if you have a video footage layer, really, this does not move the footage, but only the in and out points. And also all keyframes on your layer stay where they are if you use this option, but they move with the layer if you use this option. Okay, um, one more thing I want to tell you about this um, staggering of layers is that the staggering respects the current or the previous position of these layers. Yeah, so if I go to undo beat assistant and say, okay, I want to have a little bit more random, not so exact movement. I can start moving these here a bit. And then these relative placements will still stay like this when I shift them, yeah, stagger layers. Now you can see they are also not 100% accurately staggered. Yeah. So in other words, all layers are moved relative to their position that they had before. So make sure they are all at the same position if they have such a, uh, if they should have such an accurate distance. Let me just undo all of these again. Also, if you want to stagger them in a different order, yeah, the order of the staggering depends on the order in which you selected them. So if I say first select this, last select this, and I stagger, they are staggered like this. If I undo this and say, oh, I select them in this order, first the bottommost one and then the topmost one, and I stagger now, it's the opposite order. Yeah? So you can select them in an arbitrary order and they are staggered in exactly this order. Again, you don't need to use every beat, you can also use just like every second beat, every third beat, whatever. The third and really, really powerful function of Beat Assistant is to generate keyframes according to the beats. And for this, I've prepared this second example here where we have these boxes and currently not much happens. Yeah? And we can now use arbitrary properties of those and modify them. So uh, this keyframes box is a, bit, a little bit larger. So let me just move this in a separate window to have some more space. Yeah. So if you want to generate keyframes, so if you want to animate properties, you can again choose should this happen at every beat or just uh, some beats. And then you need to tell, okay, what kind of property do you have to modify? And you can modify 1D values like, uh, s uh, like transparency or rotation, 2D values like positions of 2D layers, and also something like positions or scale or whatever of 3D layers, and even colors. So let's start with 1D values. Let's say we have uh, the opacity of this element here, and we want it to become zero at every beat. Yeah? So we go to this box, choose its opacity, and make sure we are located here at some beat, in this case at the beginning of the um, composition, and just say, okay, the value at beat should be zero, uh, generate keyframes, and if we now look at it, we have the following. Yeah, so we can see it is blinking according to the beat and you have keyframes generated here. Here it looks like you have keyframes everywhere. This is just because our beats are currently overlapping. Yeah? If you look at the detail settings here, it says, okay, before each beat we have five frames fading in. So five frames until it really becomes zero. Then five, keyfra uh, five frames here that it stays at zero and then yet another five frames to go back from zero to the original transparency value. Yeah? And let's say we want to have this shorter, like it should not fade in at all. So we set this to zero and it should just stay like this for, yeah, say, let's say again, five frames. And we also do not want to fade out at all. So let's set this also to zero. And then we go to edit undo to remove our previous modification and go again to generate keyframes. And now you can see we have here again keyframes only for the five frames where it has this value zero at the beat. Yeah? And in between, you don't have any additional keyframes.
Uh, you can really easily modify here all these parameters, how smoothly you want to transition to this value on and so on. Now let's apply it to another property. So let's remove this, uh, these keyframes here again for the opacity and say we want to modify rotation. Yeah, let's say at each uh, beat we want to have a rotation of 45 degrees and we apply this, generate keyframes and Uh, you can see it is rotating more or less to the to the beat. Currently it is only switching, let me just show you this, between 0 and 45 degrees. Uh, it's switching back and forth because at each beat it goes at 45 and in between it goes to 0. Uh, if we want to have more like an incremental w uh, fashion, yeah, let's say we only want to add 20 degrees, but we do not always always want it to jump to 20 degrees, but with each beat it should get 20 degrees mo more. Yeah, we can just say instead of replace original value or add to original value, accumulate changes over time. And if we do this, so we accumulate changes over time, you can see here the picture also changes. Yeah, it's like, uh, let me just apply it and it's the easiest way to understand it. Um, if you now take a look at it, you can see with each rotation or with each beat, it rotates 20 degrees more. Again, if you do not want to have like to have it this abruptly but more smooth, you can say here, like, oh, okay, maybe I want to transition to the next step over five uh, frames, and you can choose whether this should be linear or exponential. Like linear is the more straight way to do it and exponential is a more smooth way. Let me just undo the previous keyframe generation again and generate this one now. So with the five frames smoothness and again you can see now it rotates but much smoother than before. Okay. I say edit undo beat assistant. Um, a very powerful feature of beat assistant is that all these animations can be done on top of previous existing animations. Yeah, let's take at, uh, now a look at this uh, smaller box here in the middle. I maybe I move this here to have a bit more space. So we want this middle box, and you can see it already has some keyframes. Yeah, and to make it even more complicated, let's add here another keyframe like this. Yeah, so now in total we have here three keyframes yeah, and this box is already moving. And now we want to modify this movement using beat assistant. This position is a 2D value so we go here to 2D and say okay at each beat please um, let's say we want it to move up 100 pixels. Yeah, so in X direction it should not move and in Y direction it should move upwards which would mean minus 100. And we say we add this to the original value. So we have here already a motion pass and relative to this one at each beat it should jump up. Yeah? And then again let's say we do not want to hold at all so we should put this here to zero and let's say we want to fade out over five frames and fade in over two frames. Yeah? Like quickly jumping 100, position, 100 pixels upwards and then at the beat immediately go back again five pixels down. And Let's apply this to this position value here. Click generate keyframes and you can see again we have additional keyframes only at the beats. Yeah, so in between, in between the beats, I mean here the beats are very fast therefore there's not much uh, time in between the beats but Beat Assistant really just generates keyframes where necessary. Namely while this animation at the beats is happening. And you can see now it follows the motion path. But still jumps up uh, at every beat. So this means you can really modify your existing animations and overlay them with animations according to the beat. Yeah. Another thing you can also do is modifying colors. Let me quickly show you this. Let's say at each beat we want it to be 
become red here. Yeah, so we go here to this color, click on it and choose another color. Really red. You can also enter here the RGB values directly if you like. For colors, it usually makes sense to replace the original value, yeah, the original color, and not adding red to some other color. You can do this if you want. You can even change, accumulate changes over time, like changing your color continuously, becoming more and more darker or whatever. But here we want to replace it by red at every beat. So we just go in this shape layer to its color property. So where is it? Contents rectangle has here some fill property and here's some fill color. We just select the fill color, go again here to the beginning where we have a beat and say here it should be red and then at every beat following this it should also be red. Again let's say we want say we want to have stay it red for five frames and we don't want to fade out and don't want to fade in at all. So it should really just blink like this. Generate keyframes and now you can see here it is red, so we have color keyframes and between it has its original value orange. And here at every beat when it jumps up, you can see it gets red. Yeah, Very nice. Okay, of course you can also modify arbitrary other properties. The third example I have here is that uh, this right box, uh, this has actually a replicator attached to it. Yeah, So we have here um, a repeater. And we have here the number of copies that I can increase to create more of these rectangles. And we can just say, okay, currently these, these number of copies are set to one. And we can say that uh, we have a one D value and at each beat we want to have four additional boxes. Yeah, So we say four and we add this to the original value. Now again, we select here just the number of copies go to the beginning and click on generate keyframes. And maybe here we want to have some fading in, like fading in over five frames, staying like this for two frames and fading out. Well, let's make this shorter, just fading in over three frames, staying for two and fading out for five. And maybe again, this time we want to have not an exponential, but a more straight linear going to this value. And Okay, we select the number of copies and generate the keyframes. You can see we have the keyframes here. Um, and now you can see that at each value, uh, at each beat, here the number of copies increases. Okay, that's my overview for Beat Assistant, I hope uh, it gives you some idea what can you what you can do with this tool. So a really f powerful little helper that makes it much easier to do consistent animation to your beats. And yeah, the heart of it again is just these beats per minute that you can enter or automatically detect. And yeah, then based on this you can generate or move layers, generate your markers, or write arbitrary keyframes for arbitrary properties.